Welcome to my kitchen. In today's video, I just want to show you some really simple, simple ingredients. This is uh, including the pasta. Four ingredients later have something really satisfying, really wonderful, and really easy. So now, let's talk a little bit about the ingredients. I have some semolina. If you have a choice and if you have the time, if you think about this in advance, go online and look for semola. Semola is just a finer grind of semolina, which is durum wheat. And by that finer grind, you can use the semola alone. You won't necessarily have to cut some all-purpose flour into it. The reason I'm cutting all-purpose flour into it is I want it a little silkier than what the ground semolina is going to give me. So anyway, what I have is a cup of semolina to two cups of flour, and this is pretty versatile. And that is gonna go, I'm gonna do this in the processor because it's faster, it's easier, and it makes less of a mess. And having said that, two to one into the processor, and I wanna mix this first. Now I have some eggs. I really like egg fettuccine, I love the stuff. And we're gonna roll it, take the shortcut again through my pasta roller. But egg fettuccine is kind of expensive to buy when you buy it nice and thin. Giacecco makes it. But anyway, it's so easy. Here's how you do it. So I'm mixing this up a little bit to make sure that I have a nice even mix on the semolina. And then I have four eggs. Aren't these beautiful? From uh, my farmer friend, Pam and Terry Strayer. God, I just love going over there. Chickens are running around the yard. And they're just beautiful eggs. But I break them in a bowl first because the last thing you want in this mix is just a little bit of shell that the processor isn't going to break down. So anyway, with this going, I'm going to drop the eggs one at a time through the top. Now, this actually does make quite a bit of pasta, but don't be tempted to double it. It just won't come together. Now, this will come together. You're going to have to pulse the processor a little bit. Keep pulsing it. Don't be tempted to add water just yet. And sometimes what you might have to do is get in there and push what has come up on the sides of the bowl down in the middle and then process a little more. Alright, so when you get in here, it's starting to break apart and it's not really staying together. I'm going to add just a tiny, tiny pinch of water, not much. In the summer, you probably won't have to add any water whatsoever, but it's really dry in the house, and I have a fireplace, and that takes, uh, that's also kind of dry. So I'm going to add just a little bit at a time over the top. Now let's see. So you can see that it's starting to form a ball on the edge. So what I'm going to do is push this down again. What I'm getting this processor to do is do the kneading for me. It's just faster and easier, in my opinion. Here it goes. Okay, so it has formed the ball just about. One more shot, I think, is going to do it. So you can see why you don't want to double up on this, even though it doesn't look like much in the beginning. Don't double your flour and semolina. Yep, it is just about there. I'm going to give it one more turn. Okay. I think that's going to be about it. So, now, what we're going to do is take this out of the bowl without kneading any more flour into it. I'm just going to knead this by hand a little bit. It's become quite a bit more smooth. Now what we're going to have to do is let this sit for a little bit before we run it through the rollers. Alright, 
We're going to wrap that up in saran and just let it sit for about 15-20 minutes. Oh, this is so much fun. Now, this is rested for a couple of minutes. So, keep the saran wrap and pinch off like, I don't know, like a golf ball size. You don't want to pinch off too much because if you do, you're going to end up with a piece of pasta that can stretch across your kitchen. But a golf ball size will do it. Now, I really like this KitchenAid attachment. It just is so much faster. What I have is the roller that I can make lasagna with. And the nice thing about this attachment is it rolls nice and thin. And making your own pasta, you can make lasagna that has like five and six layers in it of nice thin pasta the way the Italians make it. It's really worth the investment if you don't have one. Anyway, you start this on the lowest setting, which is one, or the widest opening, I should say. And then what you're going to do is run this through a couple of times. And this is, in effect, kneading the dough a little bit more to kind of smooth it out somewhat. And what I'm doing is folding the dough over on itself, and I'm getting this just a little bit wider each time I do that. And you'll notice that the dough starts to become nice and smooth. But you want to fold this over, I don't know, however many times it takes, until it feels nice and smooth. And it shouldn't stick. If it sticks, make sure that you're adding more flour. And what I do in that case is keep a little flour, dust the board or surface, and then drag it through. But this is nice and dry, so it's working out really well. So there's one. Now. There's setting number two. There's setting number three. And there's setting number four. And here is setting number five. Now, I guess I could have pinched off a little bit more, but what you can see is you can almost see your hand through the pasta. It's nice and thin. It's beautiful stuff. And don't forget that when you cook this in the water it will puff up so don't be afraid to go too thin and it should be holding together quite nice for you so because this is nice and dry I don't really have to flour this slab it, it feels really good sometimes when like this dough that I had made and I put in the freezer I'll run this through and show you how that's all what that's all about but this is a bit more moist so what I'm doing is dipping that into the flour and then we'll run this through back to one again and then folding this over a bunch of times now because because this was in the freezer and it's a lot more moist this definitely has to have more flour in it so we're just going to do that and I'm going to fold it over again and fold it over again and it's starting to feel a little moist on my hands it's slightly sticky not really now I'm going to start taking it down in size so just by the flour on the surface then there's our two, and there's our three. What I'm doing when I roll this through the attachment is I let the piece fall back on the attachment so that it feeds itself through. So there's four, and here's five. Now because this is kind of moist, I want to make sure that I have enough flour on here. So I'm going to drag this through and coat it nicely and I'm not going to put it on top of this because this is quite a bit more dry, but 
if you can see, you can kind of see your hand through it a bit. And I'll tell you what, this makes the best lasagna. Now, if I were making lasagna with this, what I would do is roll it and have everything ready to go. And I would roll it and put it in the pan. As soon as you roll it, put it in the pan. Just easier to work that way. Doesn't this look wonderful? All right, so that takes care of rolling it through the roller to get a nice sheet out of it. Now what I have to do is change this over to what I'm going to use is the fettuccine cutter, because I love fettuccine, it's one of my favorites, and simply plug that in. Now we'll roll this through. Wow, how does that look? Presto! I love this attachment. Makes it so fast. There's one. There's two. When I was a little girl, I used to go to my friend's house and her mom used to make it about once a month. Her mom would, oh my god, there was pasta everywhere. Hanging over chairs, hanging over the table, hanging everywhere to dry. And we put a whole weekend into making enough pasta for god knows how long. But doesn't that look great? It will be great. Okay, so fast fettuccine. Now what I'm going to do is get some water going and I'll show you how we're going to sauce this and make it really easy. You're going to love this part. If you have pasta dough already made, for one or two people, by the time the water boils, you can have the pasta run through the rollers and cut in time to put it in the boiling water. Now for the moment of truth. I have some boiling water that I put some salt in. I want to put about like kind of a tablespoon of salt into that because I didn't put any salt in the pasta. Now what we're going to do, and you want to make sure that it's boiling. If I were doing this from commercially dried pasta, the ratio is basically a pound of pasta to the gallon of water. But because this just goes in, it floats and then you take it out, it doesn't need quite as much. So I'm going to take my little bunches and in they go and then kind of just break it up just a little bit and we'll give it a minute to come back to the boil. Now I'm going to make two different kinds of pasta. I'm going to make some plain simple with good ingredients, really good extra virgin olive oil, a little Parmesan Reggiano, and a little salt and pepper. And that's it. And you won't believe how good it is. And I'll top it with a little chopped parsley because one, it's pretty, and two, it does add a little chlorophyll, which is kind of flavorful. And it's basically cooked. So with that, I think with the second pasta I want to make, the fettuccine, with some dill, some dried dill, it's easy, it is a season, and some feta, and some chopped green onion. With a little chicken stock because it adds a little bit of flavor. So this has been boiling and I'm going to take it out of here and drain it. Doesn't this look wonderful? I think it's going to be great. Now, here's the first batch done. To this goes a little oil while it's warm. Fresh cracked pepper. You have to use fresh cracked because it's wonderful. And the olive oil is quite good too. Extra virgin olive oil. Truffle oil would be really good on this too. A little bit of salt. We're going to toss this up. Mm, God, it smells so good. I can smell the fresh cracked pepper. I can smell the 
extra virgin olive oil. Now here's what a lot of people don't do. They cook the pasta, put a blob of sauce on top, and that is so not Italian. What you want to do is always toss it, whether it's in the pan or whether it's in a bowl, you always toss your sauce into the noodle. So out it comes to the plate. And then we are going to top this with some fresh ground Parmesan Reggiano. Just buy a chunk of it. It's going to stay a lot fresher, have a lot more flavor, and grate it as you need it. It's so much better you won't believe it. And yeah, Parmesan Reggiano is a little pricier for sure but you don't really use that much i mean what did i use a piece double that size for the flavor it's unbelievable oh and you know what else is really good all right i happen to have some some toasted sliced almonds for my chocolate cake from the other day so waste not want not i'm going to put a couple of toasted almonds on here and that's going to add just a little bit of a nutty flavor. Then a little chopped parsley to make it look nice and pretty. And voila. Simple, very simple, but good ingredients. The whole key is good ingredients. And then I have some chicken stock that I made from some chicken for my cats and Chloe the other day. And I'm going to dress that with a little bit of chicken stock because these noodles are going to absorb that flavor a little bit. You don't have to use this, but it sure is good. And it's a really good way to make some low fat noodles, but it adds quite a bit of flavor. The chicken stock, I'll go over that in another episode on a really good way to make the chicken stock. Now I'm going to sprinkle this with some dried dill. Then, we're going to put some chopped green onions into this and a little bit of chopped parsley. And then, I'm going to take, I like to buy my feta chunked. We'll toss this up. You could put a squeeze of lemon on this too. I'm going to grate just a touch of the rind over this. Oh my God, it smells so good. Now, we're going to toss this back up. And then... We're going to plate this one. Crumble the rest of this over the top. And a few more green onions. Some fresh cracked pepper. I just love fresh cracked pepper. Can't get enough of that. And a little bit of kosher salt. Voila! Two simple, easy pasta dishes. You won't believe how good they are. Now I think what I'm going to do one more thing with this pasta is as the Italians do with their good olive oil, it's just drizzle a little bit on top. Doesn't take much, but just a little bit and that'll give it just another layer of flavor. So anyway, you can see how easy it is. You can roll it, start boiling your water, cut it, drop it in the water, and probably within 10 minutes you have some beautiful, fresh pasta. Well, I hope you give these a try because they really are simple and easy. And be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you can be notified because I'm putting up a lot of videos these days. Subscribe, thanks for joining me, and hope to see you again.